Hey, what's going on guys? Mike from the Red Selectors. And today we're doing the Dreamcast Exclusives Volume 7. That's 35 games I've covered so far that are solely on the Sega Dreamcast. So without further ado, here we go. Iron Aces. Developer Marionette released February 6, 2001 and sold 25,000 copies. Iron Aces or Imperial Notaka Fighter of Zero, known in Japan, is a World War II flight simulator. Iron Aces features planes from the British, American, German, and Japanese forces. It features various model planes from World War II era and has a variety of missions, ranging from escort, bombing, and head-to-head. -head. Iron Ace's combat feels pretty good pulling off barrel rolls and escaping enemy fire, and it's intense enough to make the game fun but fair at the same time. Fun fact, Iron Ace has got a sequel on the PS2 called Iron Ace's Birds of Prey, but rather than World War II fighters, they modernized it to F-15s and alike. Capturing footage for this game, the gameplay isn't too bad, but I find there's a lot of barren space. You're flying miles before you come across an enemy. It's not like you, they put you right into the fight right away. You gotta fly to a destination and take a, a certain enemies out. It's okay. The horizon looks pretty good when you're approaching a actual landmass. It shows the landmass coming closer to you. But again, the gameplay is sporadic at best. Just on the second mission, I was just flying around and it was telling me that I'm going too far and I'm not far enough. It doesn't give you a, an exact waypoint as to where you're gonna go. Not a make or break situation, but it is pretty decent. Street Fighter Double Impact. Developer Capcom released June 19th, 2000 and sold 54,000 units. Released in arcades as Street Fighter 3rd New Generation and Second Impact, Street Fighter 3 Double Impact for the Dreamcast is a compilation of both Street Fighter 3 Generation and Street Fighter Second Impact. While playing both Street Fighter 3 and Second Impact against a computer, it's fairly easy until you face Gil, both the game's final boss. I was breezing through the competition with only using a few continues. Street Fighter Second Impact features fighters, bonus minigames, quick loading times, and extra characters. Street Fighter Second Impact was also in 30th Anniversary Collection for the PS4 Xbox One and Nintendo Switch. Fun fact, Hugo, one of the characters in this game, is modeled after which famous WWF wrestler? Stay tuned to the end to find out. Record of Lodos War. Developed by Neverland Co. Released March 14, 2001 and sold 39,000 copies. Record of Lodos War is an action RPG that is inspired by a fairly successful Japanese anime. Released in March 2000, near the very end of the Sega Dreamcast shelf life, Record of Lodos story loosely follows its anime but not too closely that you need to watch the anime to stay clued in. Its combat and graphics are done fantastically. Each weapon is easily distinguishable and heavily upgradable by visiting your local blacksmith. At first glance, Record of Lotus War is very similar to games like Diablo, Torchlight, or Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Review sites such as IGN, EGM, and the Game Informer gave glowing praises stating controls and graphics were on par with what the PC counterparts can do. As I'm playing through this game to capture footage, I was actually really blown away by how good the story felt and how deep the customization of each weapon you could do. Minor gripes of the game are that when you attack, your feet are planted and you can't move while attacking. You can only parry on spot. You can't like hack and move, hack and move. You have to actually plant your feet and hack and then you can pivot off of that. Not a huge gameplay breaking element, but it is kind of annoying when there's a lot of enemies on screen and they're attacking you from all different angles. You can't just attack and pull back. You have to attack, let go of the B button and move forward and then keep on going like that. Nothing game breaking, but it is a little thing that when you're playing modernized games and they've changed that and you're going back to something like this, it's kind of a little annoyance that I had in the game, but it is a great game nonetheless. The story is pretty good and the voice acting is a little bit cheesy, but that's what you expect when you're playing a Dreamcast game. There are some things you have to overlook in certain instances and the voice acting in this game is one of it, but the gameplay is fantastic. NHL 2K2, developer Treyarch, Yep, that same studio. Released February 14th, 2002, sold 32,000 units. Released two years after the NHL 2K, Treyarch picked up where developer Black Box Studios left off with their ever so popular entry into North America. NHL 2K1 was skipped over instead to focus on their efforts on NHL 2K2. The 2K hockey series was eventually moved to the GameCube, PS2, and Xbox consoles, where they were very well received. At the launch of a yearly title, 2K's price point was $29.99 here in Canada, which was a big deal breaker when you're comparing $59.99 when you come to the EA games. And EA hated every second of it. EA eventually signed a deal with ESPN to be the sole presentation rights of the NHL. Fun fact, NHL 2K2 was the final Dreamcast game released in North America. Released in February of 2002 and sold such limited Limited amounts. This was a bargain bin game that was probably reduced exponentially just to get it off the shelves. World Series 2K1. Developer WoW Entertainment 
released July 17, 2000 and sold 415,000 units. If you're familiar with Sega Genesis, then you might be familiar with the World Series franchise. World Series Baseball 2K1 was the first baseball game in North America for the Sega Dreamcast. Expected to be a launch title for the Dreamcast in North America, but delays were made. The amount of hype awaiting for this game was huge especially after witnessing the previous entries in the 2K franchises. I was really excited for this game. I'm a Jays fan and coming from Canada and North America, being able to play your favorite team in a modernized console was something that I was really looking forward to. Then I put it in the console and got to play this game. It's, it's atrocious. It's actually really bad. The fact that you can't control your own fielders is a deal breaker in itself. So if a ball is line drived to the left or right of your first baseman or to the left or right of your shortstop, the computer makes the decision as to whether if it's gonna dive rather than it's left up to you. So there's times where the ball could be trickling by the shortstop and he won't get the ball, or there's times where there's a pop-up in center field or in between the shortstop and one of the center fielders and it'll drop right below rather than you being able to take control of the player and try to hustle to that location and try to catch that ball. The AI makes that decision for you and it's kind of piss poor at times. The fact that there's no hot and cold zones for each batter, the fact that there's a delay when you're up to bat and you're swinging the bat, it kind of, it's not necessarily a full pull of the trigger, it's more of a tap of the trigger, which is kind of weird because it should have been to the face buttons. If you're gonna do a tap, it should be a face button rather than full pull of the right trigger where it doesn't feel as natural. The lack of a reticle when pitching is a kind of a deal breaker too. Pitching feels fairly well, but when you're aiming for a certain strike zone or certain part of the strike zone, you don't know exactly where you're hitting. When you're going up on the analog stick, it feels very weird. You're not knowing how far you're going up or how deep into the strike zone you're going or actually out of the strike zone you're going. I remembered as I was playing this game, how much I hated it when I first had it for the Dreamcast. And there you have it. Five more Dreamcast games that are solely for the Sega Dreamcast. For those of you who stuck around to the end, that real world wrestler that inspired Hugo was Andre the Giant. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys played any of these games, drop them in the comments down below. Thanks guys.